here to serve the same food we are. You know, as a chef, that's our, that's our thing. Before this, the crisis happened, I specialized in buying seafood. I have a license to buy directly off boats. So I actually know all the fishermen all the way down the coast. But uh, we, fortunately for me, I've always tended to buy more from the, the corner of the coast, the eastern side. The Louisiana guys kind of stick to there. Yeah. They take care of their own. <laughs> so, but um, after, and after Hurricane Ivan, we lost most of our fishing fleet in Pensacola, so we were already over here. So, um, whenever someone asks me, it's like, you know, we would, the, the last thing we want to do, we have no interest in serving any food that would be even possibly unsafe. It would be more for the location that the harvest has uh. been what most people are interested in. So it's like everything is outside the zone. Um, you know, my thoughts have been, you know, long things, thinking about where things migrate through, where things would be at this time of year. Um, the places, I think everything in the impact area is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Not much. But the, uh, you know, the same thing would be interesting to look at some of the migrating species and make sure that they're, they're fully tested before we jump into that. Um, well, in general, the um, uh, my customers are quite happy. We've had issues with getting oysters and um, um, Apalachicola Bay oysters, which is what we sell here. And so we've had to take them off the menu, put them back on when we feel safe. Everybody, um, I actually got an integrity award about how I handle um, how we sell our seafood and how we present our seafood. And I, you, when you come here, you get what you ordered. It is exactly what you're ordering. So um, they trust us in, in this area. Now, we did have a fish kill recently because our water got so hot in the bay because of the extreme temperatures we're having in this area that um, the water was 90 degrees, the algae had a bloom, and we had some of, something of a fish kill. So it's, um, it's a little hard to sell flounder right now, or redfish, because those were fish affected by the fish kill. So um, I think as long as we're up front and honest and tell people why they can't have something, then um, it's, it's easy to let them know that what we're serving is safe. The question is, is it oil laden? Is it safe? <laughs> you know, those are the questions we get right away. But honestly, you know, a lot of people just don't know the truth about why the food's not there, you know. And for us being in Atlanta, we're, you know, we need the, the food source from down here. And without having it, you know, it, it, we're really, really stuck. You know, we have to go to, to Maine and other places like that. So environmentally, it's not even sound for us to get food other places in the Gulf. So without having it, you know, customers are really, really uh, discouraged us by us not having uh, the availability of the product. You know, it's just that unknowing. It's just having that bug bear sort of out there lurking that you don't really know what to confront. And I think there have been so many com completing reports and then it kind of escalates to this conspiracy theory almost um, uh, sort of thing. So personally, I feel like there are so many safeguards in place that I'm not concerned with it personally. I'm eating all the seafood I can this weekend. But I do think that, you know, there are going to be lingering effects that we just don't know. And so I think um, as time goes by, we'll see how things unfold, how it affects what we're looking at, oysters, chub, and scallops. You know, for the next three to five years, you know, we don't really know what lies ahead. But as far as things stand right now, I'm comfortable. I've had some great scallops this weekend, so I'm, I'm fine with what's going on. But I think it's, it's kind of watching wait. We get a lot of questions about it, actually. Um, it's kind of disappointing. A lot of people are really nervous and scared about eating product out of the, the Gulf right now. But I think it's important that people actually like, intensively eat and buy the Gulf product. So these guys are getting paid by BP to, to go and do sometimes dubious things, and they're not fishing. So the only way that we can ensure that that maintains itself, that industry, the gold fishing industry, is if we're purchasing that seafood. So we encourage, even though we're, our restaurant's you know, an hour and a half from the Chesapeake Bay, we're still doing what we can to make sure that we're buying gold, you know, gold shrimp and, and uh, creeper and snapper to make sure that it encourages the, the industry. Uh, 
priced some crab meat back in the back there, some beautiful golf uh, jumbo on crab meat. He paid $30, $33 for it. He could have bought the same crab meat in the normal times for $16.50. So it's it was double, double, a little bit more than double. Prices, I found, never stay up as high as they are now. But they never go back to where they were. <clears throat> which is all part of, I think, the way the world kind of cycles. Right. So that's just how it is. It's kind of like gasoline. Gasoline goes up, it comes down. We won't see 19 cents a gallon again. Yeah. <laughs>